So let's talk about jobs one second, because it's one of the stressors that's going to hit. Uh, we're going to see this and we're beginning to see this in, in different areas. So I had uh, Mark Benioff on this Moonshots podcast. We're talking about uh, Agent Force 2 uh, and uh, his conversation with his head of engineering saying, you know, we've increased productivity 30 percent. We don't need to hire any more uh, engineers. Um, the flip side, of course, is a, a whole swath of, of different you know, HR individuals, customer service individuals, sales individuals, software programmers, right? We just saw Sam Altman saying he expects that the top, you know, that AI will be the number one programmer, period, by the end of this year. And therefore, programming uh, effectively goes away as a, as a career or um, as a, the highest paying jobs. So we're going to start to see jobs beginning to erode. Uh, timeline for that. What do you think? And how do people deal with that? Let's, I want to start to give people the tools of how to deal with the stressors that are coming, Mo. Uh, why did you ask me first? I was hoping you ask Celine first. <laughs> I can go first if you want. Go, go first. Go first. Uh, yes. I'll go first. This is, in, this is a so I'm in very black t shirt uh, uh, mindset on this. So let's start with the white. Yeah. So throughout human history, every time we've had a technological injection, we see employment increasing, right? We point out often, Peter, that the countries with the highest robotics penetration are Sweden, South Korea, Germany, and the countries with the lowest unemployment are Sweden, South Korea, Germany. There's just so much more work to be done. I tried to do get a, a little application built, and I tried to tell my software guys, build this application, you should be able to do it in half a day with all the tools. And they're like, no, the integration of all the different systems, et cetera, still requires quite a lot of, of human interaction to the extent that it's it's incremental, but not um, massive. And what will happen is we'll just make, we'll just uplift everybody with these AI tools and they'll become, we'll just turn out more code because we just need a hundred times more code written. If you talk to any trucking company and say, what happens when you automate all the truck drivers? They'll go, I'd hire a hundred if I could today. I just can't find them. We don't have qualified truck drivers. Nobody wants to be doing that job anymore. So throughout history, we have uplifted and made people move up the potential ladder. Uh, and I don't see that slowing down in this, except there will be a short-term blip where we try to figure out what we do that may be solved by ubi uh but we don't know how we'll get to that you know the problem we have with concepts like ubi is it's such a big shift from a union labor taxation job employment construct to that we have no confidence in public sector getting there right and so that's the challenge is how do we navigate our institutions in public sector for me the biggest problem in humanity is eo wilson saying the problem with us is our, our emotions are paleolithic, our institutions are medieval, and our technology is godlike, right? <laughs> and, and, and also the um, Douglas Adams from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who said in a funny way, he said, anything in the, born, in the world when you're born, we call that normal. Anything that's invented when you're young, that's called a career. And anything after invented after you're 35 years old is just bad for the world. Right, it's just bad. Like any banker talking about Bitcoin, you'll see them get hives, etc. I think we just have to overcome that hurdle and figure this out. For me, the biggest dark spot is none of our institutions and mechanisms by which we govern ourselves can can manage this transition through what we're about to see. Yeah. Okay, Mo. So you heard the positive side of jobs. We're going to always be creating more jobs. We're going to see increasing. You know, literally, we're dividing by zero. Productivity goes to the roof. People are able to be more creative and we're creating things and doing things that we never imagined possible or ever expected to need. How do you think about jobs? Can I leave it at Salim's point? And I'm, I'm in a very dark place on this topic. Uh, I, um, no, we want to hear it because you have you've got I, insights I, I and dis wisdom that I even disagree. AI doesn't have yet. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Uh, I, I disagree. I, th I think what is happening uh, so, so first of all, let's the parts that I agree. It's it's not perfect yet. It, you can't really develop a, a, a sophisticated full app from A to Z uh, using AI. Yes, I agree with that. But uh, most of the bits of code that are being written so far, I think there was like a poor lot of eighty percent of the code written last year or something was by a machine. Um, the, the 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 thing is, so yes, I agree. It might take time until it's fully handed over. Uh, but I also agree with your last comment, which is we're nowhere near ready for this. 
okay? And in reality, uh, we are also not just dealing with, you know, numbers on spreadsheets here. We're dealing with humans that are sometimes not easy to reskill, that are sometimes very emotional about losing their jobs, that are sometimes not ready, uh, you know. I mean, think of how many people in the U.S. today work two or three jobs just to make ends meet. Now, take those those jobs away, okay, and think oh, about how those I, I families will suffer. And I say, I think the topic we need to, to, to discuss deeply is the amount of suffering that will be in the transition, even if we end up in a good place. Now, my interesting challenge is I don't think we will end up in a good place, right? Mm. And, I, and I really don't think we should even try to end up in a good place. Why? Because remember, that whole jobs thing is an invention of the capitalist industrialist mm. revolution, right? And that maybe finally we should accept that we're not made to work, okay? And that accordingly, if we accept this, the solution would reside way, way uh, uh, far from where jobs are. It would reside into the social systems that enable us to live fully without having to, wa to work, you know, 60 hours uh, a week or 80 mm. hours a week, like, you know, most of us did in California. Now, the, the trick is there are systems around the world that allow that, you know, the French work, I don't know, probably, uh, you know, 30 hours a, a week or 20 hours a week of which around 28, they're complaining, right? <laughs> and the, the, the French economy still is running, right? Somehow it is. And I think there is something to be learned from the idea of aversion to work. Uh, which which you and I and everyone that's worked in California seem to think is an alien thought. But there yeah. are so many societies around the world where we work because we have to, okay? Not because we love to, not because it creates our future. This is the we work, this is the we, we work to live rather than we live to work. Correct. 